Hello guys, how are you? Uh, as you can see, it's raining out here in uh, in where I live in Calgary. So uh, I was just driving and uh, thought about this interesting thing, uh, idea about constructability review and thought that I will share and tape this uh, right now before I forget uh, uh, about the thoughts that comes to my mind. So what is constructability review? I think the key uh, item to remember about constructability review without going into lots of details and theoretical angles and so on is uh, I'm going to share with you one quick example as to, as to tell you what is constructability review, why you may want to do a constructability review, when you should do a constructability review and some of the key focus areas uh, when you are doing a constructability review. Uh, number one is what is constructability review and why you should and why you want to do a constructability review. The purpose of constructability review is to look at design, even if it's in a conceptual uh, status or IFR uh, status, look at design with uh, the lens of construction execution uh, point of view. Meaning, let's say uh, there's a good, uh, you have a good engineer, you want to install a uh, gland seal water package in your plant. Uh, the gland seal water package, the engineer came up with, uh, the, the team came up with an idea that, hey, you know what, uh, for the sake of uh, reducing, uh, for the sake of reducing uh, time in the field, let's do a modularized uh, construction. Um, so modularized construction, very well, very good idea. It may work out in a grassroots project, but um, the constructability review should identify whether it's practical to install a modularized skid in your location. You may find yourself in a situation that it is not actually practical to install a modularized skid or the skid that there. Because theoretically, uh, modularized skid is today's name of the game because we want to minimize uh, site installation time as well as cost. So we want to modularize everything that possibly we possibly can. Theoretically, it may make sense, but when it time comes for actual construction execution, you may find that there are other facilities, other equipment, other infrastructure at your location. You are unable to actually uh, install it because there's no, uh, no uh, space. Maybe you are unable to bring the right crane or the lifting equipment in your location to lift. So there may not be a reach availability, may be a weight is a concern. So there could be multiple different problems or issues that you may find yourself. So you do not want to solve those issues or problems in the field when you are actually doing construction execution. What is recommended and what I would suggest uh, that depending on your scope, you may want to focus on, um, you may want to scale up or down your constructability review before you even go for constructability review. Now that we know what is constructability review's purpose is to look at a design from construction angle so that you have the most optimum construction execution methods um, for your uh, installation. It has all another purpose and that is another item that sometimes people miss. Constructability reviews, one another purpose is to influence design from an execution perspective. So execution driven engineering, you may, might have heard this term, but sometimes people actually miss this opportunity completely. So before you do constructability review, we need to do three things. Number one, you need to have a design in front of you. The team, you need to pick the right team who has construction execution experience as well as understanding of design to an extent. You do not need technical experts in this situation from a design point of view because as you have seen in the example that I just outlined that the gland seal what you do not need to pick a design team to understand whether the design is technically sound what you need to know is the team that you are bringing in for a constructability review can look at that construct of that design and provide you the comments or the feedback whether they can actually install it in the field in the most optimum way um, I will take a phone call right now and then I'll come back. Okay, so let's talk about the third thing uh, when you are planning for a constructability review. The third thing that you need to remember is, uh, is to visit site. You cannot do a proper constructability review unless you visit the construction site. So before you get into the, uh, get into a meeting room with your big team that you identified in order to do the constructability review, make sure that the team visits the site and take notes uh, as, as they visit the site. And when they come back in that meeting room, then you will have better information that you can actually utilize to properly do a good constructability review. 
So three things. Let's recap. Number one, you have to have a design in front of you that you can actually review, understand, even if that is conceptual level. Number two, you have to pick the right team, the right expertise so that people can come together as a team. And number three, you have to visit the construction site that you want to do constructability review for. With these three things in, in, uh, done, then you are ready for a good constructability review discussion. So in, in my next segment, we will focus on the key focus areas that you might want to consider for your next constructability review discussion. Hello, everyone. So just finished my dinner and uh, thought that why not I spend some few minutes to take this uh, video. Uh, so I will talk about a little more in depth on constructability review. Now that we are a little bit uh, more clear, I hope uh, about uh, the purpose of constructability review, what it can achieve for you and how to take the best, um, uh, how to take advantage of the process itself uh, that it presents um, uh, to all of us uh, from a project uh, management, construction management, as well as engineering point of view. Now, regardless of your role, constructability review, uh, if you are able, if you are a new engineer and uh, and there is uh, there is an opportunity for you to take part in, please uh, feel, uh, please do uh, take every, uh, make every effort to make, uh, to attend that uh, session. So, okay, so let's little, uh, let's focus on, this is not an exhaustive discussion about constructability review. I can spend at least uh, maybe one day minimum uh, and talk about many details about constructability review and how it can help your project achieve the objectives for you. Uh, so the first thing that I want to talk about is um, how in the big picture of project uh, construction, world constructability review, where it fits in. So think about this way. So the technical details, for example, the design itself is the what, is the what, that what you have to do. The how is how you will install. So basically what and how will is an input for your cost and schedule estimate. Okay, let me repeat the concept. So you have what, which is the technical details as to what needs to be installed. Okay. And how will you install that is, uh, is uh, you have the opportunity through constructability review to, to influence that aspect. So what and how together, not one or the other, together, okay, together uh, influences and provides uh, is will be your input or your cost and schedule estimate. So it's very important that you spend enough time and put enough effort into understanding construction uh, execution challenges, opportunities and vulnerability. And constructability review is one of your best options in order to come up with the best plans for your project. So next I will talk about the, uh, how, what are the, and now that we know the purpose of constructability review, uh, why you want to do the constructability review, let's talk about a little bit about what are the inputs for a good constructability review session. There are two inputs that you should uh, take with you as a must. This is like a must. Now, I will also point out, even though it's not a discussion about design review, but I want to point out the, the key difference, if I may, from my perspective between constructability review and design review. So for design review, there are many ways to do design review. And the reason I'm talking about it so that you are you have a clear picture as to what is the main difference between design review and constructability review. And you can, uh, you can take the approach that is appropriate uh, during design review and take the approach that is appropriate for constructability review. So I want to highlight what is design review, how you should go about and do the design review. Design review, one of the ways you can do design review is to flow the, follow the flow of your fluid for example if you are producing i don't know maybe you are a, you are a company that produces soup uh, you know uh, soup uh, container soup that you can buy in your grocery store or you can be a, a paper mill at the end of the day you produce paper so regardless or you are an energy utility company you produce at the end of the day um, uh, electricity for your customers regardless of what you produce in a design review, one of the best ways to do a good design review is to follow the flow of your fluid or flow of your product. So you start 
your with your raw material it goes through uh, your uh, uh, machineries and it ends up with as, as a product that you can sell to your customer on the other hand so that's the design review design review let me repeat you follow the flow of your product okay the key distinction from my perspective when time comes for constructability review is you should not be following the flow of your product it you have to you have to have a plot plan uh, even concept level plot plan in front of you sorry about the noise that's uh, in the background i just opened kept open the uh, i'll cut this section out anyway so uh, the point is that in a constructability review the key point you have to remember is that your objective is to look at design from construction execution angle one of the best ways to do that there could be other ways and maybe appropriate in your special situation but one of the best ways in my view that you can do or achieve best results for your project is by utilizing a plot plan and then go through area by area as to where you are installing for example you are producing power so you may need a steam turbine you may have a gtg uh, you may have uh, combined uh, you may have a cogeneration facility you may need a uh, nitrogen uh, facility you may have an instrument air building and pre-code uh, gland seal water and so on and so forth you may have all kinds of different uh, equipment and instrument and machineries in your facility you have to go through not the flow of your product or the flow of your fluid what you have to do is to go through area by area geographic area wise and then come up with your and do your constructability review for each area in that way you are best equipped to uh, identify any vulnerability in terms of your design or any opportunity that it may present to you now right now i will quickly touch on a uh, few items not an exhaustive list by any means but i will quickly touch on few items that you must ensure gets discussed and thoroughly analyzed during your constructability review so for any grassroots project there are few things that is a must obviously we all have to be cognizant about safety so uh, quality construction contracting procurement lay down um, uh, fabrication installation and commissioning so those are some of the items that uh, you have to uh, take care of on the other hand if you have a facility or your project is located in a brownfield location again brownfield means it's um, you have operations going on side by side and you are given only a small piece of land where or a small piece of real estate uh, that where you will be installing your new equipment or facility or refurbishment that you have to do in a brownfield facility one of some of the key challenges that, that challenges that you may face include simultaneous operations so you have like facility you need to agree on work permitting basis you also need to agree on hazardous areas as to how you will manage those things the other thing that you need to understand is downtime you uh, the, the, in in any life facility the main purpose uh, of uh, a, 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 they are or the main objective is always to maximize production and minimize downtime so you need to plan your shutdowns accordingly because in a brownfield facility obviously at the end of the day what you are producing or you are installing is not um you, you it's not for majority of the time 99.99 percent your new facility is not going to just stand for itself it will be tied with the existing facility so that it supplements the existing facility in one way or another so you have to uh, you have to consider whether you want to do around the clock work or uh, like 24 7 or you there is a special shift uh, that you have to you have to um you have to arrange for remember um the people who uh, who will work there the crew that you will have who will work there if they are not happy your safety will not be up to the mark if they are not happy uh, and happiness doesn't mean that you need to provide them ice cream every day happiness may mean that uh, they come to work everybody goes to work that i believe with a good heart that they want to do the best job that they can do so you need to provide them the opportunity to do their best job and one of the ways to provide that opportunity is to make sure that these folks who will come to work every day at your facility has enough rest 
whether they are doing shift work like 10 4 8 8 7 7 what have you you need to agree on that and cannot change it uh, one way or another because people make plans everybody are we are all human beings and we all make plans most likely we have families and so on and uh, many people depends on us so so uh, both at work and off work so we have to take that into account as we plan um, the other thing that that comes to my mind is um, is congestion is accessibility like how do you access uh, your site your work location how do you egress in terms of uh, uh, in normal situation as well as in situations when there is an emergency um, and when i talk about congestion it's not only in one level congestion in in today's world can be in multiple levels uh, for example uh, there is some new concept out there that if you can uh, make your plant not necessarily spread around but it goes up in the uh, in terms of height uh, then you are actually uh, density of your equipment goes up now that we have better tools and modeling tools we can model the entire thing in on a desktop first uh, before we install or construct anything now well, I'm not going to go into the details of uh, whether it's good or bad or, uh, or, or what is my opinion on that, that maybe for some other video, but from a constructability point of view, make sure that you take into account worker density, the space that one um, uh, worker needs in order to do their job properly, uh, the lighting, uh, the equipment movement, um, any transportation requirement, any heavy lifts that you may need to do. So all those things needs to be taken into account and needs to be discussed as much uh, detail as possible. Um, the last but not least, uh, the logistics, that remote work area, limited personal capacity, complex uh, material, uh, 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 if there is any, any, any of that, uh, any, any issue of that nature. Anyway, this is not necessarily an exhaustive list, but uh, hopefully this helps you uh, understand the concept of constructability review and how it can help your project achieve the objectives that you want uh, out of it. Uh, see you next time. If you like this video, if you find this video insightful, interesting or helpful, please do share, subscribe and like. Provide your comments so that we can improve the content and the quality of videos for the future. Um, and if you feel like you want to see uh, more videos like this, especially on constructability review, because constructability review, as I've said, in I think in this video segment, is that we can, I can spend almost a day talking about different aspects of constructability review and it will never or not be done. So if you think that uh, you would prefer a more in-depth uh, eight hour or 10 hour long, uh, some sort of a training session, please do share your comment in the comment section below so that um, that will be a good inspiration for me and I will start developing a course that I can share with you on uh, in YouTube or Zoom or maybe some other way. Uh, until next time, goodbye.